Yeah, good evening there, guys. That's putting it mildly there, Jerry. Take a look right here behind me because the escalator is broken here again. In fact, not just one, but three of them. As you can see, people having to walk down the escalators or either the stairs. And this... This is a historical problem. Now, Fox 5 has done numerous stories in uh, recent months and recent years about the fact that escalators at various subway stations around the city break down, and then it seems to take forever to get them fixed. And on a day like today, it's creating a lot of frustration. It's insane every day every day. Many subway riders using the station at 63rd and Lexington Avenue tonight are fed up. That's because some of the escalators are broken again. And on a sizzling hot day like today, it is rough, especially for those with medical problems. It's difficult. It's, it's hard for somebody who's handicapped, and it's difficult. And this escalator is always broken. I just had this huge gash in my arm, so the pressure of jumping down the stairs, and the whole city is like falling apart. I don't know. Now take a look at this poor woman who had to hobble down three flights in a leg brace. The escalator is not working. That's ridiculous. Is they're saving about electricity? They should fire a few MTA chiefs and use the hundred grand to to pay down their uh, their budget deficit. <laughs> All right, now, of course, we did reach out to the MTA about the problem here. They're telling us that they are in the process of repairing it. But I can tell you this, it's not going to be soon enough for the people who have to use this subway station tonight. For now, that's the very latest from here. Back to you in the studio. Linda, thank you. And when temperatures rise, so does the risk of heat stroke and other heat-related injuries. Joining us now to talk about this is Dr. Raul Shalma from an emergency room at physician at New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Medical Center. Thanks, doctor, for being with us. Good afternoon. So let us know, what kinds of heat-related uh, conditions are you seeing in the ER today? Well, we saw some patients with nonspecific complaints, such as headache, uh, dizziness, and we did have a few people with fainting episodes. Uh, some of the patients actually did faint uh, while they were on the subway platform because of the intense heat. So very nonspecific symptoms. Sometimes people come in with muscle cramps, headache. Pretty much uh, those kind of symptoms. And it seems as though older people are most at risk for these types of injuries. Why is that? Well, older people tend to have more medical problems, tend to have cardiac problems, or more medications. If certain older people are on some diuretic medications, that's going to get them dehydrated increasingly. Also, elderly patients might have other dementia and aren't as good as screening for their own dehydration status. Okay, and, and doctor, we understand that some medical conditions can actually place you at a higher risk for heat stroke. What are some of those conditions? Well, heat stroke is an extreme form of uh, heat-related illness, um, but any sort of medical conditions such as anyone with cardiac conditions on medications, diabetes, uh, respiratory illnesses, these put you more likely to get heat exhaustion. Uh, heat stroke is an extreme form. Uh, any, any times any elderly patients ha have multiple medical problems, they always are at risk of heat stroke. And doctor, we just had our reporter Linda Schmidt at uh, the subway station on Lexington Avenue and she was talking about how hot it is. What are, have you seen people coming in for having issues of the uh, subway? way cars being too hot or, or waiting on the platform and and what do people do when they're stuck down there well I think the most important thing is prevention um, I think staying in a shaded area not going out between the hours of 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, stay hydrated carry a bottle of water with you you're very people are good at knowing when they usually go to the bathroom and if you're not going to the bathroom as much you're probably not drinking as much so I think prevention is the key um, and by some people have no choice but to be in these in this sort of environment so prevention I would say is stay away if you can especially from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And, and doctor one last question I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you little kids it's summertime now they're out of school they want to play outside how do you protect them well, I think little kids, they could certainly play outside, uh, but as a parent, you should be watching them closely. Make sure that they have some water with them. Uh, don't just send them out, run them out. I think it's, as a parent, you should just keep a close eye on them, make sure they're hydrated. All right, Dr. Roel Sharma from uh, New York Presbyterian, we certainly thank all of your advice. Thank you very much. Thank you. And of course, you can get the latest.